going to go back to Matt, who is high atop One World Trade Center. Matt, the view's looking pretty good. It's not bad, Savannah. You can see Lady Liberty down in the harbor behind me, just to the right. That's Ellis Island on a spectacular Friday morning here in the New York area. Now back to tell you where I am. I'm walking on what feels to me to be a bit of a precarious little catwalk. I'm on one of the cranes, one of two cranes on the top of One World Trade Center. Now to my right is the second crane. That one is a little bit taller. It has to be because in just a few minutes as I give the signal, that crane will begin to lift the final two sections of the spire. Those sections are just down alongside me right now. They're about 75 feet in length. The top is the beacon that will be able to be seen by some or by about 50 miles in any direction on a clear day. And then what will happen is they'll lift that section up or those sections up and they'll lower them down to those iron workers on the very top there, 1,701 feet above sea level. How about those guys from Local 40? They'll guide it into place and then bolt it together so it doesn't go anywhere. And below me here, you can see some members of the trade, some union members here who've been so much a part, Savannah, of this building process. Over the last six and a half years, there will be applause, there will be tears shed when that moment is reached in a little while. Meanwhile, it has been a very long journey since 9-11, through a lot of the controversy over this project. To fill us in more on that, Ann Thompson is across the way. She is over in New Jersey. Ann? Good morning, Matt. You know, matter, no matter where you stand, whether you're in the tower as you are or you're beneath it or you're across the river like I am, this building is a spectacular sight. And it means something to every American, from the daily commuter to the workers who built the building to the victims' families. From the tragedy and the rubble of that horrible September day has risen a new beginning. We got an up-close and personal look at the tower a year and a half ago, when it was only 76 floors high, beams still being hoisted, and the heat of blow torches cooled by the open air of the New York City sky. Wow. Many of the workers have been here since the towers fell, and for them, this became a personal crusade. You had a little bit of your life and soul embedded into that building right there. And for the victims' families whose hearts remain here, Though they watched the tower rise from afar, it's a mix of emotions. Jim Riches was a New York City fire chief on 9-11, and among his fellow firefighters lost that day was his own son, Jimmy. It's great to see something built back up, but for us, there'll never be closure. My son's never going to walk back in that door. This is the place where he died. Roselle and Dowdell's husband, Kevin, was in the South Tower when it collapsed. My husband's remains were never found, so... Um... This is where he is buried. This is his final resting place. The building is a symbol of a coming back. It's also a coming back for Janelle Guzman McMillan. She was the last survivor pulled from the rubble. Maybe he's a little bit of sweet, but whatever, what they have done of rebuilding the building, I think it's great. She's told her kids about what happened to her and so many others that day and hopes to eventually mm -hmm. take them to visit. They understand, they understand. They, they keep asking me that we should go back one day, even just to walk by the side, but I want it to be all done, and then I'll take them there. I drove in from the airport the other night, and for the first time I looked at the lower Manhattan skyline and smiled. That's the first time since 9-11, because the tower was lit up, and suddenly that gaping hole that we had all come to expect was no longer there. It is not the same. It will never be the same. But, Matt, it is progress. It certainly is. Ann Thompson in Liberty National State Park this morning. Ann, thank you very much.